صلى عليه الله ربي وعلى أصحابه وآله ومن تلا الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا ما بعد is the third class of Al Urjuza Al Mi'iya, a hundred lines of poetry, being with the seerah of the Prophet والسلام, and insha'Allah we are going to start today from the thirteenth line, from the statement of Al Imam Ibn Abi Al Izz Al Hanafi, rahimahullah Taala. He says, "Wasar al Nahw al Shami Ashraf al Wara." في عام خمسة وعشرين ذكرا that the best of creation headed towards Sham. He traveled to Sham at the age of twenty-five. At the age of twenty-five. So this is line thirteen. Now you'll recall that the last event that we covered, and this is event number what, by the way. So we make sure everybody's on the same page. This is the ninth event, okay? He travels to Sham to do business for Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. So prior to that, we talked about his first trip to Sham. And what happened in that first trip to Sham? Yes. Who acknowledged it? <coughs> right, so he met with the monk, and the monk's name was what? Bahira. Bahira. And he saw the Prophet at a, at a young age and believed that he would be that prophet that the learned from the Ahlul Kitab knew was supposed to be coming. And so when he saw certain things from the Prophet وسلم, he believed that he would be that one who was sent. Uh, then the author skips from the age 12 all the way up to 25, and we don't have a lot of information there. We mentioned that at some point during the that stage of the Prophet Sallallahu life, he was what? He was a shepherd, that's right, he was a shepherd. And there were many benefits to him, you know, being a shepherd. Now we pick up from the statement that he traveled to Sham, or, or from this 13th line, which I'd like you to read in English, Allah Samahit. The 13th line. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulil Kareem. Ghafurullahu lana wa lishaykhina wa lilmuallif. <laughs> or the translation of the poem? Yeah, just the, oh. just the 13th line. The best of mankind again traveled to Asham at the age of 25. Remember it. Yeah, remember it. Okay. So, oh, keep going. Read, read. As a traitor for our mother, Khadija, anha, and he returned that year after profitable trade, happy. Yes. Okay. So, lines 13 and 14th cover the ninth event. All of this is happening prior to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam receiving revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So he went to Sham at the age of 25 to trade for Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. They say that the type of trade was what is known as al-mudaraba. Al-mudaraba uh, is uh, where there's a silent partner who invests the money Right, so somebody has money, they're looking for somebody who can make their money work for them. Some, somebody who can make that money profitable for them. The, the one that knows how to, what to do with the money doesn't have enough capital for themselves. And so they create a partnership, right? That person provides the money and they profit share, all right? So this is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did at the age of 25 for Khadija, radiallahu ta'ala anha. And at that time, they were not yet married. She was just the businesswoman. Woman, and the Prophet Sallallahu was the one that was going to uh, trade with her money. And that's why he went to Sham. Now, he says, the, the author says, Li ummina Khadija, for our mother Khadija. And that is based on the fact that later, the Prophet Sallallahu married Khadija. And all of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu are called what? Um al mu'mini, right, mother of the believers. And so based on the fact that she was later married to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the author calls her Li Ummina Khadija, for our mother 
Khadija. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And Nabiyu awla bil mu'mineena min anfusihim wa azwajuhu ummahatuhum. And his wives are mothers of the believers. Khadija, you can write this down. Uh, her, her name was Khadija bint Khuwaylid. Khuwaylid, which is the Tasghir, the. How do you say Tasghir? Tasghir of Khalid. So it's, 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 when you make, it's when you make it like a pet name, I guess. Okay? So she was Khadija bint Khuwaylid, Ibn, the son of Asad, Ibn Abdul Uzza, Ibn Qusay, Ibn Kilab, Ibn Marwa. That's where she meets with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is at Qusay, the fifth grandfather of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So she had heard that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as, as did the people of Mecca, they knew that he was trustworthy. Um, she had heard good things about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so she sent her servant, his name was Maysara, she sent him with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Sham to do business. Read from page 78 uh, in our book, The Explanation of the Hundred Lines of Poetry by Sheikh Abdul Razak Al-Badr Hafidhullah Ta'ala. Qala Sheikh Abdul Razak Hafidhullah, upon returning 25 years old, meaning when he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reached the age of 25, he left for his second journey to Asham to do business with Khadija's wealth, radiallahu anha. Al-Hafidh Ibn Kathir Rahimahullah, he said, he then left for Asham a second time with the wealth of Khadija bin Khuwaylid, as a loan in the company of her of her servant Maysara. Yeah, that's not correct. That translation, it, it was a loan. It wasn't a loan. It, they were business partners, uh, and I, I'm not sure why the translator translated that way. No. He Maysara saw astonishing things from him. So, uh, so astonishing. Uh, I'm not an English major, but a lot of times you hear so, uh, astonishing kind of has a negative context. So it, that's not what it means here. It's just like he saw things that were wonderful from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. So upon returning, he informed her of what he saw. Upon hearing that, she requested to wed him due to what she hoped of good that Allah would bring about through their marriage. Afterwards, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married her when he was 25 and she was 40. Excellent, okay. So notice that what, what, we, what we gather from this is that Maysara came back, uh, he was the servant of Khadija. He came back and he informed her of the wonderful things that he saw from the Prophet وسلم, about his character. And uh, even though this is a side point, it is important that, especially when it comes to recommendations for marriage, that you actually know a person. It's not just you saw him in the masjid praying and that, that you think that that's sufficient. Traveling with somebody is very, very important. And it is through travel oftentimes, right, that you find out who a person really is and what they're really made of. A man came to Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, and this is uh, narrated by Ibn Qutayba in Uyun al-Akhbar. Uh, uh, this person came to Umar and he said, you know, this guy, he's a truthful person. He's an honest guy. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said to him, Safarta ma'ah? Did you travel with him? Kala la. He said, no, nah, I never traveled with him. Kala fakanat baynaka wa baynahu khusuma. And he did, did you ever have a dispute with this person? Why do you think he asked him, did he have a dispute with him? To see how he behaves when things aren't going his way. When, when, when y'all got a problem with each other, how, how does he respond to that problem? Does he get out like totally out of character? How does he behave? 
So the man replied, no, I've never had a dispute with the guy. قَالَ فَهَلِ اتَّمَنْتَهُ عَلَى شَيْءٍ And have you um, entrusted him with anything? Have you entrusted him with anything? Why do you think he asked him that question? See if he's trustworthy. I, got, I gave him something when I, when I came back. It was the same way it was when I left him. I loaned him some money. He needed some money. He said he was going to pay. How, how does he, how, did, you, did you test him that way? Not that you're trying to test him, but you may need to entrust something to somebody. So he said, no. He says, فَأَنْتَ الَّذِي لَا عِلْمَ لَكَ بِهِ He said, you don't have really any knowledge about this person. قَالَ أَرَاكَ رَأَيْتُهُ يَرْفَعُ رَأْسَهُ وَيَغْفِضُهُ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ He said, I think you just saw him moving his head up and down in the masjid. Meaning you saw him praying in the masjid and you, and you thought that, oh, he's an he's a honest guy because you saw him in the masjid. And so while it's important to be in the masjid and it's important to form bonds in the masjid, just because you see somebody pray does not mean that you know who they are. And one of the things that we get here is that Maysara, having traveled with the Prophet والسلام, was able to go back and tell Khadija, this person is the real deal, right? He learned that from his travel with the Prophet Tayyib. Read the next uh, line, Lord Samahit. The Ummina Khadija for our mother Khadija. La, this la, iqra min al nafs al shisma. In that year was his marriage to her, and later he consummated his marriage with her. Okay. So in that year, in that year, Kala Fakana fihi akduhu alayha wa ba'duhu ifdauhu ilayha. So in that year, he contracted the marriage with Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha and thereafter consummated the marriage. So how old was he when he married Khadija radiallahu anha? He was 25, correct. And Khadija, according to the majority of the scholars, was 40 years old at the time that the Prophet wasalam, married her. She also had children before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she was known as Umm what? Anybody know? Um Hind, Um Hind, radiallahu uh, anha. We're going to cover a little bit more about Khadija, radiallahu ta'ala anha, as we go later on in the uh, poem, inshallah, uh, because her name will come back up again. But we'll mention it right now that Khadija, radiallahu anha, had unique qualities that none of the other wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had. I'll mention five of them. The first is that she was the first wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so that's number one. Number two, she was the only wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who, who never had a co-wife. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was married to Khadija, he didn't marry any other woman for the, for the duration. I mean, the entirety of the time that he was married to Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, which, which was 25 years. He was married to Khadija for 25 years, and he never married another woman when he was married to Khadija radiallahu anha. The third thing is that she was the, old, she was the, uh, the mother of his oldest child. And his oldest child was named, we'll cover that inshallah. Number four, is that she was the mother of the majority of his children. So the Prophet ﷺ had seven children. Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha was the mother of six of them. The fifth thing is that she was the only wife of the Prophet ﷺ to be explicitly given, given the glad tidings of Jannah. From the Prophet ﷺ. And we know that Allah said about the companions in general, وَكُلَّهُمْ وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الْحُسْنَى that all of them have been promised paradise. And the wives of the Prophet والسلام, were no doubt from his companions. But specifically, it was Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha who had been mentioned. The author then goes on to say, uh, or and I, uh, with the dhamma on the wow 
is which you'll find in most places. Wawulduhu minha khala Ibrahim fal awwalul qasimu haizu takrim. Now, we're not going to get into the specifics. I mentioned last time that this, this line here needed to be fixed. Fixed or not fixed, the meaning is exactly the same, right? Uh, and then the author goes on to say, وَزَيْنَبٌ رُقَيَّةٌ وَفَاطِمَةٌ وَأُمُّ كُلْثٌ مِنْ لَهُنَّ خَاتِمَةٌ وَطَاهِرُ الطَّيِّبُ وَعَبْدُ اللَّهِ وَقِيلَ كُلُّ سْمِنِّ فَرْدٍ زَاهِ نعم. Let's stop there, inshallah. Iqra. All his children were from her except Ibrahim. The first to earn that distinction was Al-Qasim. Then came Zainab, Ruqayya, Fatima, and Umm Kulthum, who was the last of the girls. And Al-Tahir Al-Tayyib, Abdullah. But some say each belonged to a separate beautiful child. Okay, so here the author goes on to mention the seven children of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is still under the 10th event, which is his marriage to Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha and his children with her. So this is all under event number 10. So he mentions here seven children from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, three boys and four girls, right? We should, as Muslims, we should know this, right? Because if you love somebody, you love who they love. That's, that's the reality. If you love somebody, you love who they love. Our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how, do, how does that manifest? It manifests in our love for the one who, the, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved the most, which was the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. And that's why the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam was told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran to tell all of us, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي if you really love Allah, then follow me. Huh? Allah will love you and forgive you of your sins. And you can follow somebody because you're scared of them. But that's not like the following when you love somebody. It's a different type of following. And so the more you love the Prophet, the easier it is 